And welcome back to Caesar Man Warrior. This is another patron roster review, and this is Hero Crimes from S1 Elements. And uh, Hero Crimes has been playing since the beginning, but did take a substantial break, and that substantial break has really put him kind of behind the curve with everybody in Arena. Now, when he came back, the fleet was a thing, and so, of course, fleet's really cool. When you start back up, that's when they actually put you into a fleet arena, so that's why he was able to uh, kind of compete and stay competitive in fleet arena, whereas he was left behind in arena, regular arena because that's the arena he started with at the very beginning. Now, he's kind of a, a in between, mostly free-to-play slash a small dolphin, uh, has made a couple of investments here and there, just not monthly, um, but... but you know, a little bit of money spent here and there, not a ton. Let's take a look at your roster first. Um, for being around since the beginning, um, free to players can get about a million GP a year. You've been playing for about three years. That's about three million, but you did take a break. And um, so you should be around two to two and a half million if you were totally free to play. So it looks like you did spend a little bit of money, which isn't bad. And um, that's kind of where you're kind of making up the difference for the ground you've lost. Overall, you've we can see some of the decisions making you made in the past back in the day but we can also see some great decisions that you've made just even recently there are some things such as like rex that should definitely make their way into your favorites because he's still one of the most solid leads in the game but all in all you can kind of see where your development is with your characters nest some other characters like that are definitely characters you're going to want to you know focus on basta lashan is now farmable scion is farmable so there's definitely a lot of characters down here that you could benefit from but i do know that you are like I said, a very, very small dolphin slash, you know, almost free to play, very rarely ever spend. Uh, and so with that said, I'm actually proud of you. You've got BB-8, Thrawn, you've got Commander Luke Skywalker, Han Solo, you know, you're working on all of those characters uh, that are, you know, you got General Kenobi. So any of those like basic pillar foundational characters in the game, you know, you've really got. And so um, hopefully your, your guild is working on Sith Raid and focused on that and the teams that it takes for that. Um, when you asked about your roster review, you actually said you weren't kind of sure what to do. You just were going to trust me to kind of take a look at everything and see. And um, I, I went ahead and looked. Your um, ships, you're doing really well in ships. And you're actually using a really phenomenal lineup. Chimera with Darth Vader, Biston, and Biggs in the front lineup. That is what I would affectionately refer to as the warrior fleet that was the very first fleet i used when ships 2.0 launched it's the one i suggested everyone use if you didn't want to use the geos which a lot of people didn't want to use the geos and so i wanted to give an alternative and this is it and so that's really great when you look at your ships there are a couple of ships that i would um, consider or I tell you to consider developing really some of the most important is going to be like um, Cassian's U-Wing is one of the strongest reinforcement ships in the game and I mean look at your crew you've got Zetas on um, crazy enough K2SO that's a regret I bet uh, and then of course Cassian you've got a Zeta on him that one's okay and then you've got Jen and you've got him geared up and starred up and um, you've got the ability of the ships out to like seven and it looks like you're probably focused on Cassian's Ewing because you've got the first level up on Rebel Recon but you definitely want to finish it off that ship is absolutely amazing and since you have so much development with zetas you're going to have a competitive advantage with that ship so i hope that is definitely one of those ships you're you know super focused on as far as you know your bugs and whatnot you know you can see your bugs are kind of seven star but a little bit lower gear um, i would continue to develop them kind of on the side um, put them in your favorites and definitely when you get um, um you know omega mats and stuff and you're able to kind of throw a five here or a five there on abilities i would do that and i would really Really focus on their uniques. It's going to help you in territory wars, territory battles, um, and eventually arena because you'll, it'll give you more viability to differing teams that you can kind of rotate through when climbing if you find yourself ever having to climb too far. Um, another ship you have down here that's kind of surprising that um, I'm surprised actually you have as much development in is actually Plo Koon. You've got him gear nine, seven star already and his, his ship. Pretty cool. 
It's an amazing, a really amazing reinforcement, especially for territory wars, um, for durability on offense to be able to get through the opponent team without losing characters and be able to get your 22 points on offense. So it looks like you might be developing this uh, this character and ship out a little bit. Kind of a fun little side project for ships, but all in all, you know, other than the geos. I would just continue to max out your arena team. What you use in arena, I would max them out, make sure you get all of their omegas done completely, but then focus on Cassian and the three geos. Those are really important. Eventually, Houndstooth will become free-to-play farmable, and when that happens, you can then kind of move over to Houndstooth and start focusing on farming Houndstooth. Now let's go ahead and move over to regular arena. And after having looked at your team, um, you're, you threw BB-8 in there, and that's great. But um, I think, I feel like, especially with the Sith meta that's kind of running rampant, um, you probably would do better instead of BB-8 to actually have a really, really fast R2-D2. Now, you may have already used this lineup with an R2-D2 and found that it works better with BB-8. And if that's the case, you'll want to leave it. But after looking at your roster, this is the exact lineup I would recommend. CLS with Han Solo is a really great powerhouse for damage general kenobi for that damage immunity and taunt and of course retribution and cleansing and then uh thrawn for the ability to fracture and kind of bring about some control and regenerating uh protection on general kenobi as well um, but r2d2 would probably be that fifth slot i would use um, bb8's good um and if, like i said if you've tried them both and you feel like bb8's better then keep them in there but i, f I feel like r2 would probably have more synergy and bring about more durability Ability because remember R2 shares all of his stats with the team um, and so he's definitely going to make you know characters such as Han Solo a little more durable um, which is an issue even in gear 12 he's just a really squishy character but arena wise you know getting into the top 200 is always going to be a chore for you because you took that long break and right now the rebels are not meta that's just kind of the thing you're you're really going uphill right now with this team but it's what you have um, you don't really have the triumvirate you don't have uh scion and and uh, treya and nihilus developed out or even have them like trey you don't have and so because of that you kind of have to work with what you have and kind of accept uh, where you're at. But let's talk about just some characters in different factions that you could focus on that would kind of spread about your uh, usability of those factions. And, and the reason for that is we want more characters and more factions so you can have them for territory battles, light side and dark side, territory wars, um, on offense and defense. And then also, of course, you want to, you know, separate things out and have more availability for arena as well as characters you could use um, in, in fleet. So let's go ahead and go in and talk about different factions that are really going to benefit you in the most amount of areas in the game. So the characters I'm about to announce, um, and there's about eight, I would actually tag all eight and put them in your favorites and start developing them out completely. Stars, gear, um, abilities, everything, because they're going to make each one of these factions we're gonna talk about even more viable. And when we're looking at Sith, you did, you've you done a really good job with your Sith, actually. It's funny, you've got Savage, that means you were playing back then. I, I zated in gear 12 to mine as well. <laughs> um, he's actually pretty good. So. Definitely in this setup, it's Darth Sion and Darth Nihilus. They're part of the Triumvirate and they will, and I'm telling you, they will be part of the game in some significant fashion until the game is gone. Um, definitely the Triumvirate were built to last and are amazing regardless for offense, but definitely for defense right now. In the current meta, they're very defensible. Scion and Nihilus, and both are farmable, very difficult to farm both, but you definitely want to put them in your favorites and start gearing them. What's really cool about both of them is they're extremely viable at their three-star unlock, on, as opposed to most other characters where the other characters are not normally viable. These two guys are extremely viable at their three-star unlock. So you really need to start focused on, you know, gearing them, uh, most importantly, and then eventually down the road over the next, you know, six to eight months, you definitely want to throw their unique Zetas on them to give them even more synergy. Next, to just kind of help with this team is going to be Talia. That's right. Talia needs her seventh star so she can be usable not only in heroic um, raids, but also so you can use her in the last phase of territory battles. And then, of course, 
she's primarily a PvE character, but you can use her in Territory Wars offense or defense, and you just want to make her more durable. The rest of the team looks pretty good, and so what I would focus on mostly is just getting uh, gearing up Mother Talzin and Talia, and then starring up specifically Talia. So you have really great Jedi, in fact, that looks like some older development possibly from back in the day, um, but you've got Ezra, which is great. Zeta, that's amazing. Barris Zeta, that's amazing. General Kenobi, you've got Grandmaster Yoda. His unique Zeta will be amazing, but the first and most important of all of these is actually Basila now farmable on two hard nodes, one in ship and one in dark side. And so I would immediately get on the farming of this particular character. She's one of the highest priorities in my opinion, because she's going to take your Jedi from good to great. She's amazing. And now that she's farmable, she'll also probably be required for a legendary character coming up down the road. That's my guess. And her Zeta on her lead is really critical. So if you're looking at your team and deciding who to put on here, you know, your top four are great. I would use those top four, but I would get Basila Shan up as fast as possible. Don't worry about her stars. Just farm her up as soon as you can and do that. But focus on her gear and then get her Zeta on her leadership immediately. Like this should be your first Zeta placed on all your characters. I, this is number one Zeta priority for you for sure. Even if she's gear seven, I would put the Zeta on. And this, this is why one, the Zeta helps everybody else because the lead, even if they die, helps the rest of the team. And two, once you put a Zeta on a character, you're committed, right? You're committed and you know, oh my goodness, I put a Zeta on them, then now I know I have to finish gearing them out. And that kind of puts a fire under an individual to make sure they finish out a particular team. The rest of the team's great. Once you have her Zeta, I would definitely put Grandmaster Yoda's Zeta on him uh, at, down the road once you get her Zeta on, on her. Looking through the rest of your teams, you have a lot of them developed, but Imperial Troopers is looking pretty good. What's really cool about Imperial Troopers is like you're more than halfway done with everybody. That's so awesome. Um, the only Zeta you really need on this entire team is going to be Veers um, because he's the lead and that's really the one character you definitely want to um, hyper focus on as far as the lead. Um, gear 9 and 8 for, you know, 7, 8, and 9 for most of the characters means that you're kind of in the middle of development as far as gear goes, but the, this team at, you know, gear 10 rocks everything if you have Range Trooper in there and Colonel Stark in there. I mean, you gear nine, this thing can can zip right through basically anything in territory battles, um, even at gear nine. But Colonel Stark is kind of an engine for the team, kind of like General Veers is. And Range Trooper brings about a significant durability to the team that the team was kind of lacking prior. Plus, so many more calls to assists than normal uh, than the normal team does, even though the normal team calls lots of assist. It's not nothing close. I mean, they're shooting two to three times more with range trooper. It's amazing. So the two you haven't developed are actually the two I would highly recommend. I would put these guys, obviously Darth Nihilus and Darth Sion, Talia, Bastila, and then Range and Stark. Um, so those individuals so far are who I've recommended to put into your favorites and to start gearing. This is a lot for somebody who's kind of a dolphin slash mostly free to play. It's why I'm only giving you eight characters to focus on. The cool part is everyone I've talked about are farmable, maybe difficult farms, but they're farmable nonetheless. And the last are going to come out of Bounty Hunters. Now, we know the Jingle Fett's coming into the game. Pretty awesome. But right now, we know that every Bounty Hunter team, regardless of Territory Wars, Battles, Offense, Defense, you know, whatever, blah, 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 they all need Bosk period. And they all need Dengar, period. Those two together are insane staples. And they're both three star gear seven right now. So those are the two that I would hyper focus on. Also, Bosk's leadership Zeta is definitely still worth it, even knowing all the other characters that are coming into the game, especially for territory battles, wars, um, you know, Sith raid, Bosk's lead is still going to be a solid Zeta regardless. But I wouldn't worry about that Zeta right away. You know, Bastila for sure, number one, and then Grandmaster Yoda, number two, his unique. As far as these two characters, the rest you kind of have developed out. Aura and Embo aren't farmable yet, so I, you can kind of not stress about them right now, but I would 
focus on uh, farming Bosk and Dengar. Uh, they're both farmable now. Uh, Dengar much easier than Bosk. And gear them up, throw them in. So you've got eight total individuals, Darth Sion, Nihilus, Talia, Bastila, Range, Stark, Bosk, and Dengar. That's plenty for you to focus on, and hopefully that'll really expand your bounty hunters, Imperial Troopers, Jedis, Knights, Sisters, Sith, and that's going to help you in the Sith raid uh, develop further and become more contributory to your team. It's going to help you in territory battles uh, for light side and dark side and help you in territory wars. Uh, everything else is looking really good. Again, pretty impressed with uh, having taken a large time break coming back and actually even still making it into the top you know 200 300 is pretty impressive to be completely honest because there's a lot that changes in one month let alone in multiple months and so being able to have to be stuck kind of with an old meta and still climb is pretty amazing because the sith really chew through rebels right now if you have any suggestions for hero crimes leave them in the comments down below and keep your gaming on warrior out